Okay. Does that look good? Looks great. All right. Yes. So tonight we're going to explore coordinate precision with uh, XKCD comic number 2170. Uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of you, a lot of you have seen this one. It's been uh, quite popular, but uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Patrick McGranahan. I'm a land surveyor here in Colorado, in Denver. Uh, I'm a supporting member of OpenStreetMap. Uh, I'm also a member of a bunch of uh, different mapping societies, uh, Rocky Mountain Map Society, Mile High Map Time, uh, the Charles Close Society, uh, also NASIS, and uh, I also uh, moderate uh, a subreddit called MapPorn. And I run a Twitter account where people kind of send in requests of uh, maps of different places and I do my best to find them. And uh, so if you're ever looking for a map, uh, tweet at me, at MapPornTweet. And despite the name, it's, it's wholesome. So uh, yeah. All right, so uh, XKCD is a long running web comic. Uh, it's it's uh, started by Randall Monroe, a former NASA employee. And uh, he's kind of, uh, he's a, uh, he has he writes he does a lot of web comics about kind of science and kind of geeky topics and uh, he's uh, he's kind of done some like computer science discoveries with like geohashing and uh, kind of some topics like that but he's most famous for his web comics and uh, let's uh, let's take a look at a few here's one I'll let you guys read it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> So I assume everybody's laughing. I can't hear you, but uh, here's another one. And this is one survey team that I would like to be a part of. <laughs> I'll unmute just to laugh. <laughs> OK. And here's one more. So he has like a certain aesthetic, uh, and his handwriting is very uh, distinct, uh, distinctive. But what really, uh, the topic of this talk is this table. Uh, this was one of his web comics last year in July. And it's just a, it's a bunch of rows of different coordinates uh, with different precisions and uh, kind of a description of what you're looking at or what that those precisions are, uh, look like in the real world. And um, I'll give you guys a second to look this over, but we're gonna come back to this um, a few times throughout the talk. So if you don't read them all, we'll come back to them. So I want to kind of get everybody in the mindset of thinking about coordinate, uh, kind of a spherical geometry. And we're going to start with Null Island. Uh, some of you probably already know this place. Uh, it's not an actual island. It's actually the location uh, where the prime meridian, the Greenwich meridian, and the equator intersect. And I want, uh, I kind of want to get us thinking about uh, what a degree of longitude and latitude, what that means in terms of distance. So here at Null Island, uh, they're, they're not quite uh, equal, but they're roughly 69 miles by 69 miles. Um, it's still a rectangle, but they're roughly equal. And if we move up to Chicago, and that's, that's where I grew up outside Chicago, so I picked this. Uh, a degree of longitude actually starts to get thinner as you move away from the equator towards the poles and over Chicago, a degree of lo uh, longitude is about 52 miles wide. Uh, and moving up further north to Svalbard, uh, a degree of longitude is only 14 miles wide. And uh, check out that, that North Pole. I, I'm quite proud of that <laughs> up at the top there. Um, so, uh, so I showed these, these three slides to get everybody kind of in that mindset. Um, and I'll, I'll just pause here. Does everybody kind of understand uh, what I'm showing is uh, these longitude latitudes, they're dynamic uh, distances. Even latitudes are also, but uh, not, they don't change, change as much. Um, and that's because the earth is not a perfect sphere. Um, so if anybody has any questions uh, if, about this, uh, pipe up or ask me. I'm gonna get some tea. All right, so I also wanna mention, we're gonna be talking about WGS 84 uh, coordinates, mostly in this talk. And that's, uh, in most modern contexts, that's probably what you're looking at. Uh, 
when you see Google Maps or your Garmin or TomTom, uh, it's going to be WGS84 usually. But if it's a historical coordinate, it's not going to be WGS84, uh, obviously, because that was invented or standardized in 1984. So let's move on back to the XKCD webcomic. And uh, we're going to start at that first row, 28 north, 80 west. And uh, that's what it looks like, uh, one degree by one degree over Florida. Um, and he says you're probably doing something space related. So I threw in that photo from the Hubble, Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's one of my favorite photos of all time. Uh, if we get a few minutes later, maybe we can talk about that. Um, but right now we'll just kind of focus on uh, the comic. And uh, if you like that font, that was a uh, Sarah Bell created that font. Uh, I think it's called Bell Topo. And I believe she gives it out for free. So if, if you're into cartography, it's a nice font for uh, car cartography. So let's move in and let's look at the same rectangle that we were just looking at one degree by one degree. And we're gonna kind of move in uh, and follow these rows and see where it takes us. So uh, the next one's pointing out a specific city. Uh, that, uh, that rectangle is roughly six miles wide. And uh, we're gonna kind of keep on moving in. And uh, as you can see, we're, we're going down to Cape Canaveral on the Florida coast. Um, and then there's our next rectangle pointing out a neighborhood. And yeah, that's about right. Um, so now you can kind of see more, uh, see roads and parking lots and cars. And we, we keep on moving in. I put that grid there to kind of give you guys a feel for what, uh, uh, for how the coordinates are laid out. And they look like they're rectangles and they look like a grid, but it's not a Cartesian grid. And it's easy, I'm gonna keep on coming to back to that, but it's easy to think of it as Cartesian, but it really isn't. Um, so now we're down to uh, a thousandth of a degree and that's about 320 feet, the longitudinal, longitudinally. And here's a nice uh, oblique view. And this is the visitor center at the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, so now I, now we're kind of getting close to the earth and uh, we have to kind of think about the datum that we're using. Like I mentioned earlier, we were, were using the WGS-84. Uh, but if you use historical coordinates like NAD 27, uh, North American datum 27, uh, they're not equal to WGS-84. And to demonstrate this, I, want, I, uh, I use the NGS coordinate uh, website. They have a conversion website. And I, I did a rough conversion between WGS-84 and NAD 27. And it's roughly 125 feet. Um, I think uh, it's, if, if you do have to do some conversions, it, it's kind of a, uh, you have to kind of study it. Uh, but for the purposes of this talk, I'll, I'll just show you guys this. And um, you can see there's two rectangles there and uh, that's the difference. So it, it could be a danger if you're looking at old coordinates. Um, and I saw a couple, was there, was there any questions in the chat or anything? Um, I can't get to the chat right now, but if anybody Patrick, has any questions. we're just ooing and okay. aahing over this amazingness. <laughs> okay, glad you like it, Diane. Um, now, uh, let's move into the Kennedy Space Center. And I found this awesome illustration. It has a list of all the rockets. Um, there's the Saturn rocket. That was the, the rocket that was part of the Apollo program and got us to the moon, um, got the human, uh, humans to the moon. I can remember as a little kid uh, walking next to that thing in Florida and it was so hot. It was unbearably hot when I was, I think I was nine years old. And that's basically all I remember about it. And <laughs> but uh, there's also the Gemini Titan that was originally uh, an ICBM that was, uh, that's, uh, it was re, uh, uh, it was, it's used for payload delivering, delivering uh, satellites and cargo to space. Um, fortunately, it was never used in war. Um, and there's a couple other rockets. Uh, if you if you guys are kind of into it, you can, there's uh, plenty of information at that uh, website. But I want to focus on the Delta rocket because that's the one 
uh, that these coordinates are taking us to. So here's the Google Earth view. Obviously, Google Earth is a little bit more fuzzy. Um, but uh, so that was the previous that rectangle. There's a previous, previous rectangle I just showed you with that NAD27 WGS84 uh, shift. And we're pointing to a particular corner of a house. And yeah, it's about right. It's uh, this, that rectangle is about 1,200 square feet. So now if we move in, it takes us uh, to a specific person in a room. And you can see that yellow halo kind of at the top of the rocket. And that's where Randall takes us. Uh, and I really, with Google Earth, I can't really zoom in anymore from that. Um, but uh, uh, this is, and I think really the point of this webcomic is uh, to get everybody thinking about uh, coordinate precision. Um, and it's, uh, because once, once you start moving in and zooming in too much, precision does not equal accuracy. Uh, and I think since we're all kind of GIS people and thinking about mapping and uh, cartography, uh, we kind of have to find that sweet spot between precision and accuracy. And uh, a common problem is you, people just will take coordinates from their GPS and it'll be you know, 10, 11 digits long. And it, that implies an, uh, an accuracy that's really not there. So let's, uh, I just wanted to put a couple uh, some more information about the Delta rocket. It's actually, it's a really long running rocket pr program. There's been many different kinds of Delta rockets. Uh, I got that from Wikipedia. And uh, I was curious, I, I tweeted to XKCD because I'm really curious about why he chose this rocket. Uh, if there was some sort of significance, um, he never got back to me, but uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think it might just be that it's the, it's the very middle rocket of the rocket garden. But maybe there's some story. I'd love to hear it. So now I kind of want to I want to shift gears a little bit, and uh, I want to think about. I mentioned earlier how the coordinates are not a Cartesian system, and this slide I call uh, why land surveyors don't use Latin long and land surveying. That's what I do in my day job. So let's take. Uh, we have the coordinate of the rocket. And let's just take, if we know the coordinate of that cul-de-sac, that kind of dirt road. Sorry, one we, question. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by them not being Cartesian? Uh, Cartesian is the is an X, Y geometry that, uh, that we kind of learn in school, uh, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, that's Cartesian uh, geometry is on a plane. And uh, since the earth is a sphere, um, you have to use a different, uh, more specialized math, I guess you could say. Is, does that answer your question? I, do, do you mean that like X and Y don't have the same scale? Or do you, I mean, they are like 90 degrees locally, right? They're close, but no. <laughs> uh, I mean, they are on the, equa the equator, but everywhere else, no. So, um, I mean, it's, w yeah, when you're, when you're down to this level, it's almost 90 degrees, but, uh, but you, you know, you have to realize that, yeah, it's a sphere. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And I'll kind of explain a little bit more. Um, so as you can see, here's the question, what is the distance between these two points? And I know I have a lot of GIS people and uh, kind of experts in here. Um, does anybody, can anybody want to throw a guess out there for how to how to calculate it? Maybe you don't have to tell me the exact distance, but how would you calculate that? Any guesses? Um, okay, so some of you might say the Haversine formula, and uh, this is one way to calculate distances with uh, uh, coordinates. And there's the formula. Uh, it's not too difficult to understand if. Uh, if you kind of study at it, you can kind of understand uh, the numbers and the different things happening here. Uh, there's a, there's one, uh, there's an R, uh, a code in there. And that means that stands for the radius of the earth. And the radius, uh, the number of the, for the radius of the earth has changed uh, constantly uh, until the advent of like uh, satellite technology. But that's, uh, but that radius number can change uh, your distances. Um, but that's actually not quite the right answer because the Haversine formula 
uh, applies to a sphere. And as we know, we don't, you know, the earth is not a sphere, it's an oblate spheroid. Um, so the real answer is using Vincenti's formula. And you can kind of, you can see right there, the formula, I, that's way above my head. Um, and I, I'm not even gonna try to understand that. Um, but so it's kind of in sum, to kind of finish the slide, this is why surveyors don't really use uh, coordinates. There's a kind of a misunderstanding. A lot of people think their property, all the coordinates are property. There's some book that has all the coordinates of it and it, that's not really how it works. Um, uh, there's many different ways. Uh, uh, there's like sections and the PLSS, um, uh, but I, I won't really get into that. If you wanna ask me about it later, we can talk about it. Um, so now I kind of want to shift gears and I want to start talking about OpenStreetMap because this is an OpenStreetMap meetup. Um, and yes, uh, according to the wiki, OpenStreetMap uses WGS84. Um, and there's some a little bit more information. So now like my next question is, well, what is the coordinate precision of OpenStreetMap? And of course, uh, OpenStreetMap has a great wiki and um, you can look up the nodes. Um, and so there's, uh, there's a lot of information here, um, but it basically in computer science, there's data types and I, I don't fully understand it, but uh, uh, when you have like a really long string of digits of decimal places, uh, as I understand it in computer science, the data type, it can get uh, kind of fuzzy and there can be some problems with the map uh, when you have like way too many uh, um, decimal places. So as I understand it, OpenStreetMap uses des seven decimal places, and that's kind of what uh, the database is set up for. Um, but if you want to read more about it, there's a, you can kind of read on that screen. Um, and everybody can read this okay, right? I've, uh, I know we're kind of doing on Zoom, so uh, if not, um, let me know at, after the talk and I can kind of talk more about it. Um, so I'll kind of move on here. So de seven decimal places, that's uh, you're pointing to Waldo on a page <laughs> and uh, say hi to Waldo. It's hard, with, it's hard to do this over Zoom because in an audience, I think I might see some smiles, but uh, yeah. So, so I went to OpenStreetMap and here's, you know, I, I, there's what OpenStreetMap, um, what that area, what that rocket garden looks like. Uh, and we can see that the rocket has 20 nodes um, and uh, I think most of you guys are pretty uh, knowledgeable about OpenStreetMap and kind of how the structure works. I'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, if not, uh, go ahead and chime in. <laughs> so, uh, and this is, this is what I really like about OpenStreetMap is I like looking at this kind of under the hood and this is what kind of fascinates me. We have the uh, the ways and the nodes, and uh, you can see that the user 3 Yoda uh, created this, uh, the rocket, or created the, the point of interest. And we can pick one of those nodes and pull it up. And that gives us on the right side, you can see uh, the latitude and longitude, and they're about six or seven decimal places. So just like in the wiki. Um, and um, so uh, I kind of, I've been thinking about OpenStreetMap and I, I, you really can't zoom in more than this uh, on the, the main openstreetmap.org. But with seven decimal places, it, there's a lot of like uh, granularity that really isn't captured on the main uh, OpenStreetMap uh, website. Um, so I went into JOSM and uh, I think most of you guys know what JOSM is, but JOSM's uh, one of the editors for OpenStreetMap. Uh, it's kind of like AutoCAD or Civil 3D. Um, and you can see the rocket there. You can see it's a polyhedron with all the nodes. Um, so it's not a perfect circle, but close enough. And uh, there's our coordinates again. Um, and I kind of like, just for fun, I started playing around with JOSM and I thought, what is the smallest polygon you can make with JOSM. And uh, so this, I zoomed in as far as I could on JOSM. You can see that scale there in the middle. Uh, that's about nine millimeters or 
uh, three hundredths of a foot. So in a dime over there is roughly the same scale. And I just took my mouse and tried to make a polygon. That one node, for some reason, is kind of off to the side. But uh, I just, just kind of want to see for fun what JOSM can do. And I created this XML. Um, and actually, JOSM will make, will, uh, uh, will give great coordinate precision. And that's about 10 or 11 places. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, OpenStreetMap only goes to seven decimal places. So you can create uh, polygons like this, but OpenStreetMap will just uh, uh, round it. So I, and I, I, I wanted to like upload this to check it, but I didn't because I didn't want to, you know, mess with OpenStreetMap. But uh, so yeah, so uh, Randall tells us, hey, check out this specific sand grain. So uh, yeah, Jawsome is pretty powerful. And now I just want to take, just want to look at this map and just appreciate it because uh, look at this work. I mean, this is this is all volunteers. This is all just people like you and me. And look at all the detail. Uh, I kind of played around with the scaling and everything as to zoom out to capture all this. Um, and I know it might be a little fuzzy over the internet, uh, but you can see the parks, you can see the roads, you can see the marshlands, and. Uh, it's it's really well done, and I I, I got to say like uh, OpenStreetMap is really starting to hit its stride, and um, kind of hats off to the OpenStreetMap community. So now let's compare to Google Maps, <laughs> and uh, and Google Maps has a nice uh, map, and this is roughly the same scale, uh, and Google Maps does a great job, but I don't think I just don't feel as much. Uh, is it, it, Google Maps is as beautiful as that previous slide was, uh, but it still does a good job. And so let's look at coordinates in Google Maps. And uh, here's the rocket garden, uh, roughly the, where that uh, the Delta rocket is. And you can see they give us uh, precision to five digits. Uh, so it's it's actually not quite as accurate or not quite as precise. I gotta get mix, don't mix up those words, but not quite as precise as OpenStreetMap. Um, and also look at the Rocky Garden on Google Maps. You know, it's not, OpenStreetMap looks so much better at that Zoom. So yeah, I, I'm kind of picking on Google Maps, but we're here at an OpenStreetMap uh, meetup. <laughs> um, so, and does anybody know what this is? Which uh, software this is? I'll take a drink. Um, I think it's like one of the night views. It's called the dark view of, of, of a render. It looks like Apple Maps. Yeah, it's Apple Maps. Uh, I, it is like a night view. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I don't think I had a setting. I just opened the Apple Maps on my Mac um, just for this. Like I haven't really used Apple Maps much, but just for this talk. And here's kind of the same view with Apple Maps. And uh, Maybe I have some setting, but it really does not look that good. Uh, yeah, the it's the terrible in dark mode. It's yeah, um, the, uh, the visitor center is actually in the very center of this map. Uh, I don't know if I can't get my mouse going, but uh, you can't even tell it's in the middle of the map. There's you can't see the road. Uh, you can't see really any of the features. Um, so you know, there's been like I think the, Joe Morrison and Justin O'Byrne O'Byrn have been writing articles about the ascendancy of Apple Maps, but I think they still have, they still have a ways to go. But I, I do look forward to, open, uh, to Apple Maps uh, adding some competition and um, helping and forcing everybody else to up their game. Um. Kim, Kim Cook rather notably did uh, apologize for earlier versions of Apple Maps. And uh, I think they know they have a long way to go. I'm an ex-Apple employee, so I don't want to diss too hard, but. Yeah, I agree. Were you at the Austin campus? Uh, no, I was in Cupertino. Okay, cool. Um, so if we zoom in, um, here's the Apple Maps 3D view. And they actually give uh, six digits of precision. And Randall did not do six. He kind of jumped from five to seven. Uh, so it's between, you're looking at a person in a room to between that and the Waldo on a page. Um, but uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what Apple Maps does in the future. I think they're, in a few years, they're going to be a contender. So now I kind of want to shift gears. And uh, for me, uh, borders and boundaries are, 
are fascinating to me. And uh, I have to wonder what kind of coordinate position there is uh, when it comes to like legislation and uh, government officials uh, demarcating territory. So this is a very arbitrary cursory, just Google search of different uh, governments um, and what, uh, what they kind of, their coordinate precision uh, in a couple places. So like I said, it was kind of arbitrary. I found some legislation for uh, Australia for their uh, maritime boundary. And uh, you can see, I was lucky enough to find all the, the points and uh, I think what happened here, the coordinates, uh, this was like an OCR scanner kind of read all this and uh, it kind of goofed up. So you see the coordinates have a couple like the cent symbol and a square symbol. I think that was like a, a second hash mark and a, a minute hash mark, <clears throat> excuse me. And you can see on the right that they, they reference ITRF 2000. That is the International Terrestrial Reference Frame. And uh, it's close to WGS 84, but it's uh, it's still a bit different. It's more, I did some research on it and it uh, that's some like high PhD level geodesy with the ITRF. It deals with uh, kind of gravitational relativity and the crustal motion. And there's like a, there's a time vector involved because the, the continents are moving. And uh, I, I won't get too much into that for this talk, but uh, but we'll take those coordinates and you can see that the coordinates are in DMS in uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. So I converted them to uh, decimal degrees uh, to kind of get, I wanted to see how precise these numbers are. Um, and this is what I got that 14.1017648. Uh, it was actually, there was a repeating seven, uh, it was 64777 repeating um, because of the nature of minutes and seconds. And uh, so that's the one that puts us at Waldo on a page. There's an Australian Waldo, or actually he's called Wally in the rest of the world, but some, for some reason, Americans call him Waldo. So I'll call him Wally there. <laughs> um, uh, but that's this is kind of an arbitrary look at Australia. And, um, and here we go to the North Sea. And uh, on the left there, that's uh, Great Britain. And on the right is Denmark, and you can see Norway. And that line in the middle goes through the North Sea. And that's the limits of the exclusive economic zone of Great Britain. And so I found a document here. And like I kind of mentioned earlier, these, this is a very arbitrary uh, Google search. I don't know if it's really binding um, or if it's still current, but uh, this is just for informational purposes. And in this documentation, they mentioned WGS 84, which is great. It's always, for all GIS people, it's always great when you get some uh, metadata on your uh, sources. And here's some of the coordinates from that uh, document. And which it's kind of funny, they use, uh, they use decimal minutes. So they don't use decimal, they don't go to seconds. It's 61 degrees, 21 minutes, and normally you'd go to seconds. That would be like, uh, I don't know, like 20 seconds, something. Uh, but they use decimal minutes for some reason. I've never seen that before, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. And uh, so that's about five decimal places. Um, and I think that was a one, six, six, six. It was a repeating uh, problem again. Um, so you're pointing to a person in a room. Yeah. Um, but this is this part of the world is uh, ri really rich in natural resources, and uh, there's natural gas and oil, and it's kind of it's kind of a contentious issue between Britain and Norway. Um, and uh, there's a really good book that kind of deals with uh, modern mapping, and uh, by William Rankin after the map, and in that book he mentions that uh, on that boundary. For every meter of air, uh, it could translate into $2 million worth of natural gas. So the precision of those coordinates is, can be quite expensive. Um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised that, it's, that the document I looked at, that legislation, it only goes to six decimal places. Um, but like I said, there might be some superseding documents and this was a very, this was not like a legal analysis. It was just a very quick uh, look. 
So, uh, so that's about what I've got to talk about tonight. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, that's the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Uh, I can talk about that or uh, let's see if anybody has any questions.